Hello, this is Dr. Grande. I'm recording this video on October 22, 2020. Today, just before 2 a.m., my channel hit 500,000 subscribers. My channel reached 400,000 subscribers on July 19, 2020, so the channel added 100,000 subscribers in roughly three months. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed. The support you give me helps me stay focused on producing content for this channel. It really does mean the world to me. It is a continual source of strength and inspiration. In my 400,000 subscriber video, I looked at my favorite television series. In this video, I'll be looking at my favorite songs. Music is an interesting topic for me. I've always considered myself a decent critic of media products like movies and television series, at least in the sense that when I highly rate a movie, it tends to be liked by a large number of people, if that is in fact a sign of a good critic. I suppose that's debatable. With music, the situation is a little different. Among several physical limitations that I have, I've never had good hearing. I would go so far as to say I have very poor hearing, so poor that if it was unaided by technology, my life would be quite different. I mention this because sometimes I wonder if there are melodies or harmonies in a song that I miss that other people would not. Almost like if I was listening to a conversation between two people and I could only hear one of those people, from my perspective, I'm hearing all that can be heard. On top of this, I've never been musically inclined. For example, I don't understand how to write music, to play music. I'm aware of the basic terminology like melody, harmony, rhythm, structure, tempo, and articulation, but I really don't know what those words mean. I know the textbook definition for the most part, but I would not be able to identify those items in a song. Also, I don't know how to sing well. If I attempted to sing, it would make Yoko Ono look like Karen Carpenter. Now, I've never made a movie either, but I have some understanding of how movies are made, how shots are established, what makes dialogue compelling, how a screenplay flows from one scene to the next. I can tell somebody why I like a movie, in part by using language that I actually understand. I can explain why I like music too, but I can't always explain it very well. I think with music, I simply like the way certain songs make me feel and certain memories that they bring back. For me, a big part of music is the nostalgia, although the technical aspects like does it have a catchy tune or a good story are certainly important as well. So I guess my point is my list of favorite songs won't necessarily contain songs that a lot of people would like, but rather music that was playing in the background of key happy and sad moments during my life. That's why I consider this topic a much more personal topic than something like my favorite movies or TV series, although that media actually connects to my experiences in some ways as well. Nostalgia is all over the place. I gave this list some serious thought. There are millions of songs. Movies were much easier to rank. I realized after I put this list together that the range is restricted to 1975 to 1986, just 11 years. I like songs from many different time periods, but that's just the way the list happened to work out. I wasn't trying to target just that particular range in time. Let's get started with my list of top 10 songs, starting with number 10. This would be Love is a Rose by Linda Ronstadt. She has a fantastic voice. This song was released in 1975. It was written by Neil Young. The lyrics are catchy, but its technical aspects really attract me more to the song. Also, it was one of the first songs that I heard on a regular basis when I was young. It was on an 8-track. That was a media storage device that was popular when I was young. I don't really see those too often anymore. Moving to number 9, this would be All Out of Love by Air Supply. This was released in 1980. Air Supply is the only band I've ever seen in concert. This song really captures the heartache of loving and potentially losing someone. In my clinical experience, this song has come up several times when people have been unable to articulate their feelings. They mention that this song really captures what they are experiencing when they have lost a relationship and they're trying to get it back. Number eight is Will You Still Love Me by Chicago, released in 1986. I think this song really expresses a sense of longing, similar to what we see with All Out of Love, 
But here, it's really the technical aspects that I really like, the harmonies in the song. It was released a month after I started high school. I listened to it quite a bit during that year, so I think it connects to nostalgia as well. Number seven is Staying Alive by the Bee Gees, released in 1977. It was made famous by Saturday Night Fever, but the first time that it really made an impression on me was when I saw it in the movie Airplane. It's hard to think of a funnier, musically-themed scene in any movie, ever. That scene was hysterical. I like this song because it's upbeat and extremely creative. You don't hear many songs like Staying Alive. It's also difficult to be sad when listening to this particular song. Now moving to number six, here we have The Gambler by Kenny Rogers, released in 1978. This song was recorded by many artists, but of course, Kenny Rogers made it famous. I think this song is really near perfection in terms of the melodies, harmonies, and the story. It's a somber song about a gambler offering a last bit of advice before his death, yet it manages to be surprisingly upbeat. Number five is Flash Dance, What a Feeling by Irene Cara, released in 1983. The song is energetic, and while the lyrics don't really stand out, the harmonies and the rhythm are excellent. I don't think this song is necessarily important as a cultural statement. It's not important historically, but it's just a really entertaining song. I think a good song to listen to while engaged in a lot of physical activity like exercise. Number four is Always On My Mind by Willie Nelson, released in 1982. In my clinical experience, I have been reminded of the song many times. It is really like a song for those who are misunderstood people who have trouble sharing their feelings. Like in a situation where a couple is struggling to communicate and it's not clear through their behavior if they love each other or not, but they say that they love each other. They say that they're always thinking of the other person. I think this song stands as a good reminder that in relationships it is crucial that observable behavior match thinking and feelings, assuming that the thinking and feelings are positive and not homicidal or something like that. Just because somebody knows they love another person doesn't mean that they're showing the other person that love. Moving to number three, here we have I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor, released in 1978. I think this song really captures the essence of resilience after a failed relationship, and a relationship where maltreatment may have occurred. It also captures the value of being emotionally self-sufficient not needing to have somebody else. From the other perspective, the perspective of the person trying to get back in the relationship, this song is really about how there may be a point of no return when a relationship dissolves. Sometimes people can't come back after a breakup because they did too much damage, or the other person simply doesn't want them back. The other person has truly moved on. Song number two is Rhinestone Cowboy by Glenn Campbell, released in 1975. I think this song is actually quite genius. So often we see musicians and other celebrities who seem to be doing well. They are wealthy and famous. Maybe they get roles in movies and on television shows. Their lives really seem ideal, but in reality, they're not. I think this applies really to everybody. People are doing their best to survive, and often they want to appear like they're doing well, even if they're not. I think this is really captured by the line in the song, and the smile can hide all the pain. Many people struggle in their daily lives, but for a variety of reasons, they don't want other people to know. They don't want to appear weak or in need of help. This is the main reason I'm against forced smiling, which I talked about in another video. The idea that people can't stand reality to such a degree that they force people who interact with the public, like restaurant servers, flight attendants, and receptionist to put on a smile that is potentially disingenuous. This takes me to number one. This is Cool Change by the Little River Band released in 1979. I think this song has a particular appeal to people like me who are low in extroversion. People that not only value time alone, but they really need that time to re-energize. The lyrics really capture the idea of someone who's stuck in a routine as exemplified by the line, now that my life is so prearranged. 
the song teaches the value of variety in one's daily routine. There's a time to work, there's a time to play, there's a time to be with others, and a time to be alone. Because songs are so connected to emotions, I have found that discussing songs is helpful in my clinical work, like having a client describe their favorite song or describe songs that have special meaning to them. It's just another way that the art of music can improve the application of the science of counseling. I would be interested in hearing your favorite songs if you want to put them in the comments section. Thank you so much for 500,000 subscribers. I plan on making videos for as long as I am able. Please keep these suggestions coming in. Almost all of my video ideas come directly or indirectly from comments on YouTube, as well as other social media platforms that I'm on. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon. So a little backstory on the shirt I'm wearing. So a while back, somebody suggested that I wear a Hawaiian shirt for one of the milestone videos. I can't remember which one. And then a few other people said the same thing. So not long before I was preparing to do this video, I ordered, I think it was like five or six shirts on Amazon. There was one that was like yellow, another one was orange, a few that were blue like this one. This was the only one that arrived. The other ones were delayed in shipping, so that little message came up where you can just get a refund because they don't really know if they're ever going to show up. I've had a few other packages where this happened, like they just get lost in shipping somewhere and no one knows where they are and they might come, they might not. So you can, again, just get that refund. But I really wanted the other shirts to come in, like I was going to wear them in different videos. But now that I'm wearing this one, I realize I'm not really comfortable with short sleeves. It's not something that really occurred to me before this, but almost all of my shirts have long sleeves. Sometimes I'll roll them up, but I like having them there. I don't know if that makes any sense, just the way I'm wired. So maybe there are long sleeve Hawaiian shirts. I don't know. It doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense because they're like warm weather shirts, but I guess there could be. Or I guess I could just adjust. I could adapt to the short sleeves. But if you like the Hawaiian shirt look and you want me to try different Hawaiian shirts out, let me know and I'll buy a few more and cycle them in along with the other shirts that I wear that are long sleeve dress shirts for the most part. So I just wanted to give a quick backstory on the shirt. I didn't want to let that go without commenting in some way on what I was doing with that.